Well, hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, welcome back to Grow a Little Wednesdays. I hope you. I, I really hope you've enjoyed these times. I've really enjoyed uh, teaching a little bit about things that um, I find really important when it comes to leadership and when it comes to life. And uh, in fact, today uh, I want to spend some time uh, talking about casting compelling vision. I think vision is a really big deal. And not just uh, for the leader if you're leading an organization, but man, uh, casting vision in your home, casting vision for yourself, casting vision uh, for your roommates, um, uh, being a vision carrier. And, uh, and vision is all about painting a picture. Uh, in Proverbs uh, chapter 29, verse 18, famous verse that says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Other translations say where there's no vision, the people cast off restraint. Isn't that interesting? I think oftentimes we look at something like restraint as a negative thing. But the Bible teaches that that actually when you have a big vision for your life, when you have a big vision for for your world, for for what's going on in your home, for what's going on in your workplace, for what's going on uh, in, you know, in your environment, um, it actually restrains you in a healthy sense of the word to go, man, I got to be more disciplined. I got to be more focused. Um, I got to make great decisions. I got to walk with character so that I can carry out uh, the vision uh, that I really feel like my life is leading to. Um, when we have a vision that that goes for it, I believe that that produces life. Not just life in us, but life in the people around us. And um, So we have to be good at casting vision that gives people a clear picture of what they can go for. And so I, I got kind of five points here, five things that I think really have helped me over the years when it comes to um, painting a picture for other people as to what life can be. And uh, so I, I want to give you these five things. Uh, if you're taking notes, uh, write this down. Here's the first one when it comes to casting compelling vision, when it comes to painting a picture of what can be. Uh, number one, uh, you have to be the vision. You have to be the vision. You have to be what you want other people to be. The reason why is very simple. People buy into the person and then they buy into the vision. In fact, this is why people who are actually, um, uh, even um, people that have a, a terrible vision, but, but they're somehow able to create buy-in to them, are able to lead people even to, to really terrible endeavors, is because people buy into the person long before they buy into the vision. And so if you want to create this amazing space at work, if you want to create these incredible environments at home, you have to be what you are communicating. Um, and I think this is really important. If you can't get excited about everything, then, then you need to grow in your ability to cast vision. Uh, what, what I mean by that is, is that there are so many times, I cannot tell you, this is a true story, I cannot tell you how many times that, that I've been in the shower and I will start a sentence, and, and I mean like an audible sentence. I talk to myself a lot. Uh, I'm sitting down watching TV and I'm talking to myself. I'm in the shower and I'm talking to myself. In fact, there are times where Christina will, will walk into the bathroom and I'm taking a shower and she'll hear me talking to myself and she'll go, who are you talking to in there? <laughs> it better not be anybody. And, and, uh, uh, and I'll just be talking to myself. And actually one of the most reoccurring conversations that I have with myself is I will start the sentence like this, man, I'm just so excited about. And I will just start communicating things out loud to myself about things that I'm excited about. And I know that sounds like absolutely crazy, um, but you have to carry that type of spirit. I believe that type of spirit is contagious. People that are just, they're the vision and they're excited about the things that are put before them. Um, I, I, another way that I think kind of can really help you do this, you know, be excited about things is you have to bring life to something at work that others find mundane. I, I, I think that's a huge part of being the vision is just, man, the stuff that people find mundane, find a way to bring excitement to it. Again, this even takes place in your home life personally. In fact, w one of the things that I do uh, and I, I've talked about this a little bit at our church. It's, it's a strange thing. I'm a strange person, and so I do weird things. And one of the weird things that I do uh, is I will time myself taking the dishes out of the dishwasher. 
So, so I'll, I'll go to my microwave and I'll, I'll put you know, a few minutes on the clock and then I will press go on that baby and then I'll start taking out those dishes. Now there's a, probably a reason why just about every dish we own is dinged, but that notwithstanding, uh, you know, all I'm doing is trying to find uh, passion and joy in the mundane. Um, life is only boring if we make it boring. Life is only mundane if we look at it as, men, as mundane. So you have to be the vision. Uh, a part of that is just seeing things that aren't, uh, that aren't there yet. In fact, when, um, uh, when we were looking for a building when our church first started um, about four and a half years ago, we were looking for a building, we were driving around, and there was this 100-year-old historic building that sat on the main road in our city. Now, what's interesting is that building had sat vacant for a couple years. It was, it was for sale, um, but there were a couple of issues with it. One is it was pretty run down. Uh, the, the other thing about it is, is it was pretty, um, th- there, there weren't like any parking spots. There were maybe, you know, 40 parking spots for the whole building that sat 350 people. And, uh, and honestly, I, I remember showing up to that building and walking around it, and I didn't see any of that. All I saw was a growing, thriving church uh, in which God was going to do miraculous things. And so, so we ended up like making a way to get it. Um, somebody purchased the building in order to lease it to us. And, and since we've purchased that building, and, um, and, and that was our original building that we met in um, at the very beginning of the church. And we grew our church to thousands of people in that small little space, running a bunch of services on a Sunday with no parking. Uh, and then once we had done that, there were a lot of pastors in our city that were like, hey, if, if you ever, you know, like don't want to meet there uh, again, we, we'd love to have it. Uh, and uh, and he, he, here's, I say all that to say this, is that you have to be the vision. And a huge part of being the vision is just seeing things that aren't as though they were. You got to be the vision. Uh, another part of painting the picture is this is a big one when it comes to vision. Uh, number two is you need to layer the duration of wins. You need to layer the duration of wins. Uh, you know, uh, Christina tells a story, and I've told it too, uh, of her running in, in this race when she was a, a little girl, and she, ran, she was running the 400 for the first time. And she didn't understand um, how a staggered start worked where if you're in lane one, you're the furthest back, and then in lane two, you're a little further up, lane three, you're a little further up, and once you ran the track once, you're all running the same distance, but it has to stagger because of the shape of a track. Well, uh, she's in lane one, so she's the furthest back, um, and she's on the inside lane, the gun goes off, and they start running, and she tells the story that she takes about four or five steps, and she stops. Because she just thought, man, this was not fair because I have to run further than the rest of the people in this race. Now, now, I I share that to say, uh, the reality is this. If you don't give people early wins, they will get discouraged. In in fact, there's two types of wins, right? There's the immediate wins, and then there's the long-term vision, long-term wins. And uh, here's a way to look at both of these. Uh, um, Immediate wins give you momentum, But if that's all you have, if all you have is immediate wins, then there will be a feeling of, that's it? Like that's all there is? Now, long-term vision is big and exciting, but if that's all you have, people will get tired. And they'll be like Christina when she started that race, eventually they will give up. The vision has to be big enough to contain the long-term goals and formidable enough to to see the short-term goals. You know, you know, when something is, um, is air vacuumed, um, whenever you're going to keep, you know, food in the freezer or you're going to do something like that, um, sometimes what people do is they will air vacuum. So they'll put food in a bag and they'll, they'll suck out all the air to make it as tight as possible so that the food can last longer. And, and the reality is, is that a lot of times with vision, you have to take out the excess air. You gotta take out all the extra stuff. It doesn't mean that that stuff won't happen down the road or that you won't communicate some of that stuff, but you gotta give people some immediate wins, cut out all the excess and go, hey, what are some wins we can accomplish this week? Hey, this quarter, what are some wins we can accomplish? Hey, this season, what are we going for? And so I would encourage you to ask yourself, what are the wins you can get today, this week, this month? What are you going after over the next six months to a year? 
And I think if you can start doing that, you have to layer the wins for people. Got to give them short-term wins. Got to give them big picture, long-term stuff because that is exciting, but you got to give them short-term wins as well. You need to layer the duration of the wins. Number three, you need to anticipate the questions that people would ask. When it comes to painting a picture and casting compelling vision, you need to anticipate the questions that people would ask. Um, Growth Track is our membership uh, class here at Gray City Church. And one of the huge things that we're trying to do when we're going through the content for new people that are trying to decide, do I want to be a part of Gray City Church um, in this way? One of the primary things we're trying to do in all of our content is we're trying to answer questions even before people ask them. You got to anticipate what those questions are. When you're thinking about the vision for your team or for your family, you have to be able to, to fill in the spaces for people. The reason why that's so important is because you have had a long time to process what you're going after. You've thought about it, you've dreamt about it, you, you, you've, been, you've been thinking about it you know, uh, for a while. The problem is when you, when you tell your family, hey, um, you know, we're, we're gonna save money, we're gonna sacrifice this year. Some of you, maybe you've sacrificed for a couple years because you wanna buy a house. Well, what you have to do is, you, know, you might have been thinking about that, for a while, but your kids haven't been thinking about that for a while. So if you say, "Hey, hey, look, um, you know, we're probably not going to eat out as much. We're probably not, you know, we're gonna we're gonna miss our family vacation just for this year, so that we can purchase a home in 12 months." Uh, the the key to all of this is you need to anticipate the questions that people would ask. Um, and, and by the way, here's a question that everyone has: How do I fit in? That is a question that everybody always has. How do I fit in? Vision takes a momentum blow when the leader isn't prepared. Come on, I, I, I've been in rooms, uh, I've been in meetings where you show up and you go, huh, I don't think the leader was prepared uh, for where this was gonna go. I think they just wanted to say their big ideas and say these grandiose things. But when somebody said, okay, so what are we gonna do in the next six months to accomplish that? There was no answer. Momentum always takes a blow, especially momentum that has to do with vision always takes a hit to the gut when the leader isn't prepared and therefore not answering questions even before they're asked. Another big part of casting compelling vision is you need to sell the right things sell the right things now this is is especially true if you're going to lead a team in church or or if you're doing anything like like you know in the church uh you need to sell the right things because what i found uh, to be true in leadership is this whatever you get people with you have to keep them with so whatever you get people with so you know, whatever you get people with, whatever you recruit them with, whatever verbiage you, you, you capture people's attention with, that is the only way that you are going to keep them. So you got to be careful of the promises that you make. If you appeal to the flesh, then you will always be dealing with the flesh. If you appeal to their spirit, then you will always have something to point them back to. So when you're casting vision, uh, man, you, you got to sell your values. That, those are the things that you got to sell. you got to sell, okay, what are your values? One of the things that was fascinating about Jesus is that, that he didn't appeal to the flesh. In fact, you know, like Jesus never said, hey, come be a part of our church. Come, you know, come follow me and you can sing front lines. He never said that. He said, hey, come follow me and you'll die. But then you'll really live. But you'll die. But you'll live and you'll find new life, right? He, 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 he appealed to their spirit. And so I think when you're casting vision, when you're, and, you, and when you're casting compelling vision, man, you got to appeal to those broader things, to those bigger things uh, that are in people's hearts and in people's soul. Be careful what you sell um, because you'll have to keep people with whatever you sold them on. And, and, and then the last one is this. When it comes to casting compelling vision, this is a big one. Pay the price to get updated versions. Pay the price to get updated versions. I think sometimes we think that a vision is one of those things that you capture once and for all, and then once you capture it, you have it. And that's not how I look at vision at all. In fact, vision is a lot like your computer. 
uh, you know, for example, like right, your computer is your computer. It it functions in a in a particular way. Um, your computer, you use your computer for um, certain tasks. However, um, your computer will constantly remind you that it has to get updated. And, and so, what you will do is you'll update your computer. Now, updating your computer, it always takes some time, right? It, it means you, you got to find something else to do or another way of working while your computer is updating. And I think uh, vision uh, works the same way. Um, A, it takes time, and B, uh, it constantly has to be updated. It doesn't mean that your vision is changing in a big sweeping way. It doesn't mean that you're changing and scrapping one vision and, and moving on to another. It just means that you are humble enough to go, okay, my vision is pliable and it has to get updated here and there. Like, for example, like when we started Grace City Church, we knew at some point we would have a youth ministry. Like we, we, we knew at some point. However, when we launched the church, um, uh, um, God uh, quickly escalated um, the growth and, and what was going on in our church. And we felt like, man, we might have a youth ministry on our hands sooner than expected. And so within eight months of us launching the church, we went, okay, is God updating our vision? Is, is, he, is he updating our vision? And so we prayed about it, we thought about it, we talked about it, we debated about it, and we ended up launching a youth ministry that has been incredibly fruitful way sooner than we thought we would. Um, I, I knew at some point we would have a music studio at our church. However, you know, I, I didn't think it would be any time, I didn't think it would, definitely didn't think it would be within the first five years of our church. However, what happened? Man, God opened up these crazy doors. We got another building, and, and, and through a, a crazy set of circumstances, God has provided for us to have a music studio for Grace City Music and other uh, you know, groups that come in and, and record stuff uh, in our studio. But what was that? that was a, did, our vision didn't change. It was just updated. And so you got to constantly go back to prayer. You got to constantly fast. You got to constantly journal and go, okay, God, are you updating my vision? It doesn't mean you're a sellout. It doesn't mean that you're quitting. It doesn't mean anything like it. It just means that you're humble enough to allow God to update your vision. One of the questions I get asked all the time is, hey, hey what's Grace City Church going to be doing in 20 years? Like, where do you see our church in 20 years? And to be honest, I tell people all the time, um, listen, the vision is going to stay the same. We're going to be reaching people. We're going to be, you know, uh, helping people get in their word. We're going to be, you know, helping marriages. We're going to be, um, uh, you know, uh, doing exactly what we're doing now. However, in an updated format. So we don't really know. It's, it's hard for us to say what our church looks like in 20 years. I can tell you the vision is going to be the same, but what do the updates look like over the next 15, 20 years? I don't really know. We'll have to pay the price in those seasons to capture the updates. And so, uh, so just know that, that a vision is ever evolving and ever forming and, uh, and that you need to pay the price in order to get those updates. Well, I'm, I'm a firm believer um, that life is about the vision that you have for yourself, uh, the fruitfulness of our life, how we live our life, the joy that we carry. It's all about the vision that we have for ourselves. And so I want to challenge you right now. Have a bigger vision for your life. Have a broader vision for your life. You know, uh, you know don't just settle for, oh, okay, I'm going to be, you know, I, I want to be a mom. No, I want to be a great mom. I want to be an effective mother. I, I, I want to be a dad. No, I want to be an effective father. And, you know, man, I want to be a husband. I want to be a wife. I want to, I, I want to, you know, uh, start my own business. I, I want to be the manager in my place. I want to elevate in this company. Um, have big vision for your life, whatever it is. And, and I just don't think you can go wrong doing that. And the other part of vision is constantly bringing other people on the journey. Uh, a true vision, a true kingdom-oriented vision always includes the lives of other people being elevated. And so I uh, uh, love you. Um, if you have any questions about casting vision or anything like that, please uh, email me, uh, andrew at gracecity.com. would love to kind of shoot you back some quick responses on some things when it comes to casting vision. But I'm um, telling you, man, if you kind of um, look at these five things and kind of start to put them in place, I think it'll be really, really helpful. Love you and uh, have a great rest of your night.